Nina's here on the sofa today <laughs> with Kane and Jake. Oh, oh, yay, yay. Casting couch part three today. No one's going to get pregnant, though. Yay. We back. <laughs> <laughs> All you do is laugh on this podcast. I know, but it brings joy, right? Yeah. Just br- and deaf and deafening. <laughs> and definitely oh, is. Literally, if I listen to it on my on my headphones, I'm, my ears they're going. My so, cackle is not okay. Listen, it's like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> in the corner. See, I had to move away then. Yeah, you know this. <laughs> Laughing <laughs> like a happy hyena. Yeah. Nina the hyena. The hyena hobbit. Ni- Whoa! <laughs> I didn't say you're a hobbit. I would never say that. No, you never <laughs> you ever say that. Never. never. So anyway, welcome back, Nina Benina Brown. Hello. The Hobbit. What's up, Jacob? <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, I like your jumper today. Thank you very much. Good what, sir. What jumper is that? Uh, fierce Living. What is Fierce Living? Oh, it's a brand that's up and coming. Oh, please oh. tell me more about uh, this brand. I don't know. I haven't, haven't got the details for it yet. I thought your name was like Florence Love It. <laughs> <laughs> fierce Living. What is it? What is it? Mm. It's a clothing brand. Oh, okay. Where can I find it? To know, I don't think they've released it yet. Oh, soon though. Apparently soon. Very exciting. Very exciting. Are you sponsored by Costa Coffee? I am sponsored by Costa Coffee. No, you're sponsored by Kane because Kane brings it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, this feels This is the highlight back. of our week, this is. Like, you turning up with coffee. Oh, I thought you meant me. Yeah, just cut right there. I thought you meant me turning up. <laughs> no, just you turning up with coffee. Disgrace. The fact that I get coffee delivered to me on a Tuesday morning, best part of my week. Fair play. Wow. Um, how was your week, guys? What to go on them? Oh, we, we had a lovely time without Jake. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> that. We went for breakfast. We had a lovely time. Oh, we went to Penzance. Lovely. We did miss you though. We were mm. talking about you a lot, taking the piss out of you quite a lot. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, All the Asian jokes came out. I'm sure. I would never, no, why, ever. What do you think of make us? Asian jokes. What kind of person do you take me for? Anyway, we did miss you though. But we had a lovely time, didn't we? We did. And the weather was nice. Mm. Actually, Didn't you get the yeah. nice weather down there. Although like, we did get like a spit of hail. Yeah, like for about forty-five <laughs> seconds. The only time we were walking back from the shop, we we're like, "What's going on? Why is it hailing?" But other than that, it was nice. Penzance, I'm always either like really hot or really cold. Whereas this time it was like mm. kind of good. Does Penzance confuse you? The reason why I say this: you look at the location, mm. and then you look at the population. Mm. Doesn't the two don't go together? Keep going. Yeah. As in like the people that live there, to me, don't fit the scenery. I'm just going to leave that one there. But do you think that's just because your only relationship to being there is with dancers? No, but as in because it's such a pretty town. Yeah. And then like... (laughs) Hold on, this could go really badly. (laughs) Keep going. (laughs) And I... You're trying to say ugly people. (laughs) Not ugly people. Just people that don't fit the... No, well, no, do you know what? I, 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 no, I I don't condone what you're saying. I don't get it. But (laughs) I think what you're trying to say, Jacob, is that it's such a cool, (laughs) no, (laughs) take two (laughs) from the top. I think what you're trying to say is that for such a beautiful, like, place, Mm. like, it's quite uh, behind in the times there. Yeah. Like, as in the That's people, a good word. Like, the people there, like, they don't have, like, very modern clothing and stuff like that. But don't you think that's because they don't have any fucking shops? <laughs> <laughs> like, their high street is full of charity shops. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're going to... I know they have, like, probably, like, a JD or something somewhere. And, I mean, I don't know how long it takes for online deliveries to get that end of the country <laughs> but like because it's far like i bet you the it's amazon so prime is different to ours i bet yeah. you they don't get next <laughs> one day. week not one day <laughs> yeah but it's like <laughs> arrives this month <laughs> you know what i mean um but i i kind of get what you're saying but like like the fashion and stuff there is quite mm. dated but i think it's because they don't have the availability for the availability it. it's not like they can be like Do you know what i really want a new pair of jordans i'm gonna just pop to the shop and get some like on the high street but then all the dancers there are trendy. But I think that's mm-hmm. because they're in a pop. They're they're like part of pop culture. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're part of like a trendy culture. Whereas I think if you're not part of that, and you have no desire to it, like at the end of the day, dude, they probably all just smoke weed and surf. Yeah, True. like they probably actually are like. Why do I need all these clothes? I just need a wetsuit <laughs> and a surfboard and some good weather. Well, you're not gonna get good weather in England, are you? Anyhow. Anywho, yeah. So Penzance was lovely, but you were missed. Mm. Had such a great time. Fiona actually held a great first event. It was the first one mm. doing an event called Amplify. Amplify. And it was about introducing 
kind of dancers who are looking to make a career out of it when they're older into what it would be like. You know what I mean? So from the ages of probably like eight and up. They're even like six or well, they I'm actually maybe eight and up. I don't know. They were young. Young to like adults. They're two different age groups. And uh, they had to do like, um, so I did my classes. I did like a, a drills class, mm-hmm. like on like quality of movement. And how Kane Classic. Do. Yeah, Kane Classic. And then with the younger one, I just did choreography, but I tried making it like oh. a stage piece for them. Right. So instead of it being just a combo, I made them all learn like cannons and like different timings. I didn't do transitions. We only had an hour, but like they just had to do stuff in cannons and it was quite mm, a cute one. It was. And uh, I pretended to be Bruno Mars. <laughs> right. So I was walking around like like leaning on and pretending to sing as they were like <laughs> holding positions. It was funny. Um, and then with the older group, I did like an audition kind of class. It wasn't super auditioning where I was like, you're hired, you're fired. Like mm-hmm. one of those. It was just like teach it as if it's an audition, make them mm-hmm. do it like in groups, whatever. In yeah. like groups of four or five and then like switch lines and then talk about like what they, what they should do in those scenarios. Um, and then Big Chris came down and his wounds were... So obviously Chris broke his foot in Panto uh, at Christmas time. So I was like, what's he going to do? Like, he can't come down and dance. Like, he's only just got mm. out of his, like, Robocop boot. <laughs> um, and he come down and he actually held, like, a class on, like, how to, like, slate. So when, like, you'd walk up to a camera at a cast in audition and be like, hi, I'm Kane Silver, I'm five foot... <laughs> five foot eight my agency is the ins and outs podcast agency like and then like turn to the side show your hands and all stuff like that and teaching them how to do it at show your hands. Hands. which is so good because so like you, good like you don't get taught like stuff I've never like been at college that. like ever it's just something you, you figure you, out you figure out the more you do it yeah you have to show your hands sometimes because like mm. a lot of the times for like a campaign maybe or something they want to see your hands they want to see if you've got tattoos if, right. um, and then Chris made a good point. If you've got any yeah. like deformities, like, so say like, you've got like, I don't know, like no finger, that's something they need to be aware of, mm-hmm. but maybe it's not something that would be super noticeable. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like, you'd notice if they don't have an arm. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like just stuff like that. And he was teaching them how to do it. And if they like, so they would try yeah. it and then he'd be like, no, do it again. Try it like this, do it like this until they like, like came across confident and like what makes you stand out compared to mm. all the other people and like even things that, like people walking up to the camera with their head down and being, right and like and like starting like what i was saying was like start with a smile finish with a smile first and last impression so really figure out yeah. that kind of body communication yeah and like how you stand like your hands are in front of you you look closed off like put them by your side i was always like open your legs a tiny bit wider so you don't look narrow and naive mm. i mean you look like mm. a superhero and confident like it was so good. Yeah. Like, that is, <laughs> like my this. name is Kane. <laughs> my name is Kane, and I am an Avenger. Um, I'm here to take over the world. But no, it was actually really fucking good. Yeah. Like even I learned a lot from it. And then that's a really interesting topic. Yeah. And before that was good. He played a game. Oh yeah, yeah. He had a ball, and it's crazy how people sucked at it. Like they were people were so bad. Mm. But like if you had said to these kids, like, and and the older ones, like, go in the middle and dance they wouldn't bat yeah. an eyelid. Yeah. So you'd throw the ball, you'd stand in a circle and he'd throw the ball to someone and they'd have to run in and he'd like, so before it'd be like, so you have to tell me, you have to introduce yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you throw the ball and you run in and go, I'm Kane Silver, next person. Da, 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 and it's how you say it. And people like with their head down, like I'm Kane Silver. And it'd be like all about like getting you used to speaking because mm-hmm. he's like saying as dancers, because for people who don't know, Big Chris is like part of an, a- he has an agency and, he's like helps with castings and stuff like that. So he sees a lot of self tapes. Mm. So he sees all the things that go wrong. Mm. And he's like, all these incredible dancers, as amazing as they are at dancing, through a self tape, yeah. they're like, hi, my name is Sophie and I love dancing. Like it's so withdrawn. So it was like exercises to bring that out and mm. bring that out of you and make you like louder and be more confident. And he was like, tell mm. us something interesting. Tell us something that you love. That's always the hardest thing. That's the hardest If someone question. says, Say a fun fact about yourself. Oh, yours was good. What was yours? Oh, it was so random. I just said I like to um, take people's gherkins out their Big Mac if they didn't want them. <laughs> <laughs> the most random thing said, I could think she of. She said it, and you could just feel everyone like, "What? what? 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 But you're memorable. It's gherkin girl. Yeah, <laughs> give it up for gherkin girl. I don't even okay. remember what mine was. I have no idea. And then. Because you don't want to say the classic like, oh, I have a pet cat. Yeah, that's not interesting. That's, that's, not, that's interesting. not interesting. No. Although mine, I had a snake. It's interesting. That's, that's mm. a little bit more interesting. And I'm afraid of snakes. That makes it more interesting. And then you had to run in and say what you're afraid of. 
Mm. Mm. And one little boy ran in and said failure. I was like, that's a big one for mm. a big one for someone who's like 12, 13. I was like, okay. I'm sitting there trying to think of what my interest in fact would be. That's is such a to narrow your life into one. But like, if you <laughs> one fact, yeah. But it, don't you think that if you can't uh, find know, interesting, something, <laughs> but if you can't find something interesting about you, how are you going to get someone else to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it was so good. Like if you don't know what's interesting about you, how on earth are you going to get like a someone director? interested in you? Yeah. yeah. Like, imagine, like, not knowing where you're interested, how interesting you are, and going on a date and not being able to make them know know, (laughs) that you're interesting. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Like, it was just, it was really good. And then you had to say something that you loved about yourself. Mm. Yeah. So, what do you like about yourself? So, then people would run out, and, like, yours was like, I like, wasn't it that I'm a hobbit? I like that I (laughs) um, embrace that I am a hobbit. Yeah, I, li- I like that I embrace that I'm a hobbit. Like you do, you own being sure. Hell yeah. I think I, I'd run in, I just said, I love everything yeah. about me. <laughs> you were the first one, it's what you just, I, love one, everything. I, mean, I love everything about me. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't, but I was just trying to make those kids feel like, yeah, it's okay, okay to love it's yourself. It's okay to love yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know and I mean? that is such a um, cultural, like, not norm, I don't know what the word is, but like, it's so kind of, you're so taught to be humble, yeah. Rather than going fuck modest. yeah, it's modest, yeah. Like yeah. W- when you can't, you can't go. I fucking own this. Yeah, which well, Kim I'm really ki- good at this. Kim kind of said at the program on Sunday, which we'll get to. But like, like we have that British like politeness, Polite. politeness. Yeah. like where we're like everything has to be reserved or like. Whereas like go to LA, like and everyone's like, I'm the best. <laughs> I'm amazing. Like, we don't have that. <laughs> no, we don't. Maybe that's why we're <laughs> but, yeah, behind <laughs> in a way. Yeah, we just need to own up to it, so then we can push forward yeah. instead of holding back. Yeah, no, I agree. But it was super dope. Like Chris's class was like so sick. I'm so mm-hmm. glad he didn't teach dance because like I actually found that so much more beneficial than learning steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. even for me who doesn't really do that anymore, like it was interesting to see what people's weaknesses are as their generation. But it also gives you something to work off as a teacher as well, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, oh, I'm definitely stealing those games. Mm. When I so, plan my lesson. Go, go to the... <laughs> Someone grab a ball. <laughs> do, do you have to run and, and... Were you picked out to run and grab the ball? Like, go on, explain so, the... So we'd all stand in a circle. Let's say I start with the ball. I run in the middle. I say my interesting fact. And then I choose anyone and throw it to them. And it has uh, to be fast. Mm. It's all okay. about it being fast. There's no running in the middle and being like... Um, what's my favorite color? Um, I don't know. Like, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It was like, go, 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 Quick go. Fire. So you have to just do it. Oh, I like that a lot. And you have to be mm. loud. And people, like, if they were speaking quiet with their head down, you'd be like, stop, do it again. Louder, chin up, like, be mm. proud, mm. be present. Like, it was sick. Yeah. We spoke about this donkeys ago. I think you were still in college, I think, last year. And you were saying about how to utilize your time outside of classes. Yeah. And I said about working on skills that aren't dance related mm. because so much of, in my mind, of success is created from things like communication skills. How do you betray yourself? Like, there's so many more. So important, though. So important. Yeah. So, again, we can be. I was related to hairdressers, so I'm an ex hairdresser. What? And, yeah, I'm a qualified hairdresser. Really? Yeah, yeah. 16 to 18. Do you not know that? No. But we always used to say that you could be a shit hairdresser, but a phenomenal speaker, and you'll be way more booked than the person mm. who's... Uh, because you're the, yeah. giving the gift of the gap. Because you're doing the gift of the gap, and you're making them feel comfortable and at ease and all the rest of it. So when I said to you when I got here, like, I was going to go and get my haircut this morning. I just don't even think about it. You anymore. didn't even be like, mm. I got you, bro. I got you. I wouldn't... Are you shit? Well, I'm probably shit now. That's been are 10 you, years. Are you the person I'm 26 that, now. Are you the person that's shit who's got the gift of the gap? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I was talking about you, basically. <laughs> Yeah, so I did yeah, Bus- hairdressing. Real businessman. Real businessman. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, it's how you how you betray yourself will determine a lot of your mm. future no, it was dope. opportunities. Great event, Fiona. Bravo. Woo! Bravo. And probably one of the easiest events I've taught at because everyone who was there was like wanting keen. to. Yeah. Like really keen. So it good. wasn't cheap childcare yeah, for yeah, the yeah. younger ones, you know? Like it was really, really good. Um and we had like a Q and A with the kids, and they they actually asked them like really I don't questions. know if like they were prompt mm. to like ask good questions by like Fiona or by the parents or what's it say, but some of them asked such good questions. Go on, enlighten. Like, like it was a little girl, and she was like, um, "How do I get over the fear of dancing in front of like a large crowd mm. of people?" Mm. And like you know, she's asking professional dancers. So this is the perfect people to ask. And I kind of explained to her, and you know me, I'm like, you, it depends who I'm performing in front of. Yeah, yeah. I can perform in front of 100,000 muggles and I'm not scared at all. 
because and I, my exact words were they're stupid <laughs> like if you've got to think like they're stupid they don't know what you're doing yeah like and obviously i don't mean they're stupid but i mean they're stupid as in they they're don't not know, dance educated they're not dance educated they don't know what's good yeah. and bad they just know if they like you or not yeah like they know if it's you're all dancing as a group or not they know mm. if the the music they like the music sense, yeah. they know if you're smiling they don't know what a ronde jean is they don't know if your foot sickled they don't know all the technicalities so as long as you're showing to them that you're having a good time they have a good time so don't ever worry about so much if you might make a tiny mistake mm. or like that just enjoy it and if you enjoy it they'll enjoy it i was like but my biggest fear is like actually performing in front of like dancers mm. i was like so i use like competitions as the reference yeah, like, yeah. i hate doing judges showcases at competitions because my whole job that weekend is to judge three thousand dancers another judge and yeah. now <laughs> for two minutes three thousand dancers judge me yeah like that is terrifying and i kind of like got that to her that i still get terrified but mm -hmm. only in front of a certain mm -hmm. audience so it's okay to feel that way and like i don't know they were just like oh that makes sense like yeah you could see a lot of think cold just mm. light bulb moments going oh. and for like 10 year olds like mm. i was never yeah. that clever at 10 <laughs> but fiona breeds them i'm different. not that clever now <laughs> <laughs> no comment <laughs> Yeah, but Fiona breeds them differently. They're, like, yeah, they they're are another breed, level. Though. I said that. And then yeah. they said, um, one of the mums was like, because the parents asked questions, like how much of a disadvantage is it for them being like in Penzance? Right. And I was like, you've got yeah. Fiona. Yeah. That's, that, that's exactly yeah, what I said. I was like, it's nothing to do with their location. It's about the foundation that it's built on. Like, right. They're built in such a good place from such a great school mm. with so much pride. I'm going to die. <coughs> COVID. COVID's gone. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> 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 ended thursday me. um <laughs> and then cancelled um yeah i was like you know she sets them up at such a good place like yeah. they could be in london they're not gonna get fiona no. like yeah it was dope man the fact that she's putting on events like this mm. it was cool right yeah really but we did good. miss you oh yeah they looked fun I'm yeah it was fun and i was gonna say we'll get you there as a videographer but they had kyle yeah they, they got some antenna they got kyle richards but kyle was actually <laughs> hilarious so they, <laughs> so we were asking we had the, a social media chat with a social media professional charlotte lodi and uh kyle was like i've got a question and he was like she was like go on in front of all the kids yeah. right and she's literally just <laughs> finished saying to them how like your followers and likes like they shouldn't be a big just deal to yourself. you just be yourself yeah. don't adapt to try and get this big following <laughs> ah. okay. and Carl went so what can I do to get more followers because I'm, I'm at the point where I might just buy them <laughs> <laughs> of course Carl would ask that like but he hadn't listened to what she just said before <laughs> and it literally been about 40 seconds like he hadn't obviously listened to a word he was just filming and then asked that question I was dead <laughs> so good so then all he kept doing was tagging me and stuff and reshare it getting some followers. <laughs> he's like you got 17 and a half thousand i was like yeah but that's not that many no like i don't understand followers and social media i don't get it at all it's not my well when you first started posting you didn't even put hashtags and tags <laughs> you just used to write why to dance <laughs> and post and <laughs> like hoping people just find it yeah i'm i'm, in, I'm bad at it yeah it's good. Uh, what else have we been up to? What have you been up to? Busy, as always. Uh, so last week, obviously, PTs at classes, running business, been looking at a new commercial property um, to expand into, which is a lot of uh, obstacles to climb over. Does that scare you? Um, the thought of like opening a new business and like committing to like... A year, like a couple of years contracts and stuff. Yeah, um, like even let's say a year contract, like you're committing to a year's contract of like, you don't know what's going to happen. I think from a, f I'm, I'm so, I would rather know. And if I fail, I fail. And I'm really okay with failing. Um, it's more, will my team be happy with my decision making? Will my like clientele be happy with my decision making? It's more that, that's what worries me. Um, but no, it didn't scare me. I don't mm. think, I'm never bothered by like mm. losing money. I'm never bothered by like failing quite epically. Mm. Um, and more just work out the logistics. That's the stressful part is it's like you're balancing like 10 different things at the same time and trying mm. to make it all match. So I, but it's a problem solving game. It's interesting. Um, and then Saturday, Sunday came and filmed your class and then went and filmed a show straight after. You did. You had a busy Sunday. I had a busy Sunday. Thank you for coming. Just That's right. And I filmed and uh, edited Nina's 
showreel that morning as well. Let's go. Um, so Update. Nina in the morning and then you in the afternoon and then show in the evening. Oh, that's a lovely day for you. It is. It is. Yeah, we had Kim in on Sunday, come and teach at the program. And Kimberly Taylor at Kimmy LTD, I think, or something like that. So Kimmy LT. Kimmy LT on Instagram. And dude, like, she's so fucking good. So good. Like, like her textures. Ooh. It was so nice because, like, you know, obviously I normally bring in people that have taught me or, like, have a big influence on me as a dancer because, you know, they're the people I look up to. Um, but it was so good because, again, she kind of, like, says all the things that I, I try to get across, but in a different analogy. And it mm -hmm. coming from a different person really helps hit home. Like, she was mm -hmm. saying to them all, like, the, like, the first thing she said was, like, oh, this is so nice. Like, we have all different kinds of dancers in the room. Like like you don't all look the same mm. and i was like thank you like do you know what i mean like you're, like yeah. you're interesting you don't all look like robots it's not boring yeah. like she said that from the jump so like it kind of oh. set the tone of like you can be like good here you can too. feel good and you can like explore a little bit but obviously within context of what it is mm. <clears throat> and then she was like she looks so effortless when she dances and like i always say to them like don't use your energy as your tool right and she is like the prime example of that like mm. everything looks so effortless. It still requires so much effort, mm. but she uses all the attributes instead of just energy, like to make it good. And like, I don't know, I really feel like they, they took everything that she said and they applied it, mm. right? Like watching them dance it, I was like, oh, you, you're, getting it. you get it. Like you mm. might not get all the steps perfect, but you understand the intention that she's asking you to achieve, yeah. which means you're becoming smarter dancers. You know what I mean? As opposed to just being like, this is the move. I can do that move. Now I'm going to show you it. Mm -hmm. They're understanding the dynamic and stuff behind it. It was really good. And there was a um, a girl, I think it was Emily. Uh, so shout out to you, Em. Like I said to her, like, I've never seen you dance that good. Like, it was so nice. Like, it was mm -hmm. like it brought out a new side of her that I've never seen. And I was like, who's this confident, like, roasting it at the front? Like, and even Kim said how good she was. And I was like, wow. It's like, for you. Yeah, like, good for you. Which one was that? Uh... I don't, I don't know her last name. I'll tell you. I'll show you a photo of her later. She's okay. dope. But I was like, let's go. Base track seats? Grace. Uh, Grace. Grace Hopkins. She roasted it. She roasted it. Her and Scarlett were in their element. You mm. could tell. Yeah, I was, it's, that felt like a Scarlett combo. Yeah. And it was, well, Scarlett actually is normally too full out, right? So like, remember she asked the question mm. about energy. Mm. <laughs> How to use energy in, on here. Normally I'm always saying to her like, chill out a bit. And this is dope. So obviously I filmed their group so she could see herself. And uh, that's the one I posted on Instagram for people who saw it. And she messaged me saying, I think I actually found my 40 to 60% energy. And I was like, yes, you Aww. did. And you should be proud. Like, mm. that yes. felt like a little victory. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she watched herself and she felt happy. Because I watched in, I was like, yeah, you figured out the right energy levels. And she has noticed that she's figured it out as well. Yeah. And I was like, yo, that's why we do this. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've, you've nailed the, you're, you've, you've conquered your weakness. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Dope program. Thanks, Kim. I love you. And you said really lovely things at the end, which meant a lot to me. And you did a nice Instagram post. <laughs> <laughs> Made me feel a little emotion. Because it was full circle. Like, she come and taught on my program. And again, my dream when I was 17, 18, was to be in her and Cisco's company, Dance to Excess. So for her to teach at mine, like, <sighs> super dope. Shout out, Kim. Love you. Yeah. Um, nothing else been popping, really. We just spoke about 45 minutes about other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, so today's topic, kind of wanted to talk about, um, what the word? Body dysmorphia. Body dysmorphia. Did you actually Google it? Did we actually look it up? Nope. Right, you carry, carry <laughs> on talking. You, you did tell me to, but I didn't. Uh, body dysmorphia. <laughs> That's <a> classic. <laughs> so like, obviously as performers, uh, we have expectations put on us of how we should look. Mm. Like, and I don't know if you felt that way uh, like as being a performer and yeah. going through college and like in our role, especially in training or in rehearsals, all we do all day, every day is think about our body, what position is in, what we make it look like and stare at ourselves in the mirror. That's the thing. Cause you're always looking in the mirror. So like we find everything wrong with us. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all day we're staring in the mirror. So all we do is find things that you don't like about yourself because obviously you take class in front of the mirror and then you might be taking class in front of a mirror in a leotard and tights 
That's doing, the worst. Doing something that you don't feel good doing anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like, so say ballet is your weakness. You're in this tight ass clothes, which let's be fair, leotard and tights doesn't really not look great on flattering. anyone. <laughs> like it's not flattering on no. hardly anyone. It's so exposing. And then you look at yourself, do something maybe that you're shit at. Like it makes you feel like trash. And I just wanted to talk about like, maybe a, have you ever experienced like that kind of body dysmorphia where you feel vulnerable or you like find negatives about yourself and if so like have you come out how have you overcome it or how do you overcome it it i definitely i definitely have especially in ballet uh-huh. probably because it wasn't a, a factor to it was it wasn't a strong style of mine so you've got that well i look crap dancing it as well as wearing pink tights and a leotard which yeah. is the least flattering thing ever whereas Especially pink tights oh, i know like in jazz i felt a lot better because it's black black don't know why and also like you've got black like, slimming black slimming yeah. mm. it doesn't show detail like it doesn't show as much detail whereas like say you've got like a fucking mm. pimple on your leg like like i've got stretch marks on the inside of my legs i'm sure if i had pink tights on you'd see them mm. i don't know the one tights that were the the ones tan tights they just they're good i loved it they they make you they make you look good that's a that's a good vibe that one did you find that everyone felt that way i think even if people didn't necessarily show it i think it's just a thing that's just ingrained i think it is getting better as such cuz like at addict everyone was like taken in whatever Mm-hmm. whatever you look like that wasn't that wasn't a factor to the college as such as yeah, yeah. some other colleges might have um i don't know if lanes is still like this now but my first ever time audition in there they're never going to promote this podcast um <laughs> my first time audition in there in like 2009 the first thing you would do when you walked in and times have changed so i'm hoping that they've they don't do this anymore but if you do take it from me this was a really shit experience i walked in and the first thing they do was weigh and measure you yeah i don't the I very don't first know who thing still does that. Everyone, does yeah, everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you go into the audition, they weigh, they measure and weigh everyone. So if that's like, if that's something A that makes you feel insecure, to, like yeah. if you're like, say, say I was overweight, that might determine how the rest of my day goes. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you, it, it, it strikes a vulnerability from the jump. You yeah. know, like. Do you know what I mean? Why do you think they need, feel the need to measure you? I mean, surely you can just look at someone and go, you've got a good physique, you've got a bad physique. Not a bad physique. I don't know, but why desirable. does weight determine anything? No, which is my, kind of my thing. It's like, I, for, in the PT world, I would never get someone to measure their fitness success on weight. No. I get them to know how they fit in their clothes, how they look. What does it look like in front yeah, of the mirror? Yeah, I don't know. Thing. I think it's just an old school thing, which was probably yeah. done a long time yeah. ago and it never changed. But I don't know if it still does now. Like I said, I imagine it doesn't. I mean... Mm. Can't, you don't think you get away with doing that now yeah i'm surprised oh. that you felt insecure <clears throat> when getting weighed and measured i was i didn't look like i did now right then do you know what i mean mm. not that, not that, that i felt insecure but i was just like what the fuck right Why is this a bit more of a thing that you base me on and you not seeing my talent yeah. first yeah like from the jump that's that's my first mark mm. my first yeah. grading but dance is kind of historical for having well that's that that's, kind yeah. of Living body a, yeah and that's you know, image like i said half my career is based off being able to be shirtless mm. you know what i mean like but mm. that's kind of why i want to talk about it because it's like what negative effects does that have on us like a college every day staring at yourself in like in a mirror you you're destined to pick things pick yourself apart mm. and find things you don't like and you're going to compare yourself to someone else all the time but then that person will probably want to be looking like you. Mm. But you but you, you never communicate that. You never that. communicate that. Mm. Which, Did you find that a lot? Did, were you comparing yourself? Were you? Yeah. Again, something you've never even communicated with me, for example. Yeah, I think it's such... I think we are beginning to talk about it more. But then again, it's like... You don't want to come across as, oh, where was me? I feel mm. bad about my body, la, 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 la. Because then there's the other side of... Then to me, I go, well, if I don't, if I don't like something about myself, mm. change it. Yeah, yeah. But not everyone but has But not that, everyone has that mentality. that mentality. And they're not taught to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so when I was in college, I was always the one that was told like, oh, you'll, you love dance, but you don't have the right look. Or like, not even in college, just by people. Mm. And like, it was always like, oh, 
the commercial industry is based on how you look. So then I did whatever it took to look good. Right. Like I had the worst eating habits. Like when I was in LA, like I looked the best I've ever looked. Like I looked incredible. If I took my top off in an audition, like. It's old. Mm. Probably gonna get the job. I remember Casper Smart being like, yo, you are shredded. You're the most shredded white guy I've ever seen. And everyone used to be like, you're that pale and I can still see abs in photos. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like Taylor James doing my headshots was like, you're the first white person I've never had to edit abs on. Right. Like, cause you're that pale and I can still see it. That's mm. how lean you are. But like, so all these compliments is like, oh, I have to look this way. They mm -hmm. feed to you, right? Yeah, you feed. Oh, that means yeah. it's good. That means I'm doing the right thing. Dude, I was eating like 1600 calories a day. Really? No carbs. Going to the gym twice a day, taking class and hiking. I was killing myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't, but because we're not taught about like health and nutrition and stuff. That should be such a core part mm -hmm. of yeah the course yeah but because We've i wasn't taught about a lot of times yeah. before haven't we because i wasn't taught about it i was doing all the wrong things to make sure i look good not thinking about the adverse effects and i got to myself to a point where then if like i would hold water retention because i had a piece of a bread piece of, yeah, because whatever. my body was so not used to having it i'd be like oh my god i've gained weight i'm fat it's and then i'd go for a run like it's just water retention yeah. i don't know what's going on with my voice <laughs> right now I sound like a frog <clears throat> let me and we're back. Um, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like the, the psycholo psychological damage I was doing to myself, mm. Mm. I wasn't even aware of. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's crazy. Do you feel like you needed to be as straight rated and shredded as you were to, in order to put the jobs? Because there's a difference between being having a good physique and then being ripped. No, I didn't have to. But that might be the one thing that gets right. me the job over you. Got you. You know what I mean? Like I wanted like to me, like it's a game of inches. Mm -hmm. Like that one little tiny factor could be the difference between me and you booking our dream jobs. Like, mm. and that's how I used to see it. So I never wanted to have anything. But again, I wasn't aware of like, dude, like for me to get back up to like being able to just eat, like what, that was, I was 24, 25 then, living on like under 1700 calories. If I ever went over my calories, I would go to the gym and I would like- Burn it off. I would burn it off. I'd like go for a run mm. and go for a hike or I'd work out again. Like I do fasted cardio at 5 a.m. Like all these negative things. Mm. Like, because it was never about health. No. Mm. It was about how I looked. It wasn't about internal, it was about external. Whereas now I will literally eat and drink whatever I want to a degree. Mm -hmm. like, of course. I know yeah, when yeah. I'm being a, a fucking arsehole and eating like a dick. But at the same time, like I never feel guilty about eating cake now. No. Or like mm. I think of like the social benefits of food. And you're pretty yeah. ripped still. Do you, are you uh in a position where you'd feel comfortable in an audition yeah 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 but like that's because i feel like i don't see myself shirtless as much anymore or i'm not being judged on it as much anymore like mm -hmm. when i was doing dream boys like probably one of the best like i was massive like i trained every day like i looked fantastic i hated how i looked Right. Because I was shirtless every single yeah. day. And I went on stage in front of a thousand people five times a week or four times a week, whatever it was. And I'd feel like they're judging me of what I'm, what I look like. So what part like, of you did you not like in that stage? I could find anything. I'd be like, oh, I don't like my lower abs as much as right. I like my top abs. Or like, I wish my chest was as like developed as much as my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would literally be like, so pick a part. I'd pick my part and myself apart so much that it create this like negative thing in my head but mm. on the grand scheme of things i looked yeah. amazing mm. yeah but i could never see that do you know what i mean like yeah i was confident because i was going on stage but then like if i ate shit that night i'd be like oh my god it's I ruined shit. Like, i'm gonna yeah. look like trash on stage tomorrow no one's gonna like me i'm not gonna be the hot one <laughs> like do you know what I mean no one's gonna cheer for were me were you ever i know that's a no <laughs> <laughs> okay. unless there was someone with a weird ginger fetish <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean like mm that effect that it had mm. was weird. And I never knew how much I carried that until mm. I quit. Until you quit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas now like, don't even bat an eyelid. I've been to the gym in almost two weeks because I've been too busy. Naughty boy. <laughs> and, well, I've just been so busy. Like yeah, I've been yeah. dancing so much and teaching, but normally I'd be like, I'm going to go to the gym at midnight just to say I've been to the gym because yeah, yeah, I yeah. have to do mm. that thing. You know, like, whereas now I know- You became I a slave to the own, to your own- My own insecurity. Mm. Your own insecurities. Yeah, which was my strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bizarre. Yeah. Like how fucking, like, if you'd said, what, do you, what if you take your tops off in audition or in class, like, I know that's my strength. But yeah, yeah it became my insecurity. But I think you have to be, this is a very sweeping statement. You have to be slightly 
ill in the head to be super successful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like to be that obsessive will A, determine how successful you are, but you, I think you have to be a little bit. Yeah, but it makes it rough life. It makes it rough life, mm. but you have to be a little bit loopy. Yeah. I think. Like, I, I don't know about you, but like, in I was always coming into the dance industry being told you have to look a specific way. So like if, and I would look at everyone that's successful, everyone that's made it and they all look fantastic. That's the thing. So I would yeah. then be like, well, I have to look like that to be, to be successful. Then on the flip side, is that it's kind of correct. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? But then no, we're not being taught. I don't know. I don't know if colleges do it now. Maybe they do. So if you do shout out to you or if people don't, but like are people being taught how to achieve that? But in a, in a healthy manner. In a healthy yeah. manner. Without That's the most being, important thing. Yeah. Because people will find any shortcut they can. Like get a tablet. Take this oh, tablet. Dude. But like, it's like diet pills and stuff. Yeah. Like, like dude, I used to buy I used to spend when I was in LA eight hundred dollars a month on supplements. What kind of supplements? Protein powder, fat burners creating really yeah like Dude. i just bought into all the gimmicks because i was like i just need to have the edge that might give me one percent dude eight hundred dollars a month i was fucking broke yeah how the f- you i was gonna how much, s- like, yeah. i had no money but i would like prioritize that eight hundred dollars on it's that. like almost like smoking for you just on the opposite end yeah. of the spectrum yeah. but in my head it was like and i was i'm healthy i was talking to a client about this actually on just friday um the fitness industry is overcomplicated fitness because it's then profitable yeah. The harder mm-hmm. it is to achieve, the more likely you are to buy into BCAs, into mm-hmm. diet pills, into PTs. Whoops. And yeah. <laughs> no, PTs is the best investment good you can have. Because you actually only educate good. Yeah. And I always say this to people. Supplements and that are the top 2%. You need to get the first 97 to 98% right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You need to get your diet down, your sleep, your eating, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then if you are in that top like final 2% push, then you yeah. buy into that. That's the way I see it. Yeah. But then going kind of what I'm trying to make out of it is there's an education issue. Yeah, for sure. For A, about how you should look in the industry and how to achieve, how to be, how to achieve it in the industry, mm. how to mm. achieve your body. To and I used to tell industry, everyone that, yo, you should get these BCAs. Like you should do this, you should do that. And whereas I probably should have just been like, like now I would go, what do you eat on a daily basis? Yeah. Before How much you spend, do you eat sleep? Before you spend £30 on BCAs to get like your protein intake constantly when you drink water, mm. are you even eating enough protein? Exactly. Like <laughs> it's irrelevant how much aminos you're drinking if you're not eating enough protein. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a poor form of it's one molecule of a protein. Like yeah. it's making no difference if you're not mm. eating enough protein. Like, but without the education, I would never have known that. Mm. But like when I think of all the negatives I did to myself to achieve that thing that looked good is crazy and how bad it was for me mentally like because that's not right like if mm. you eat a chocolate bar you feel like you need to go for a run like, yeah come on. That, that's that not is, living at like, all like no. that's not but like do you find that for, like so i used to follow loads of fitness models and then constantly i'd be like seeing fitness models seeing this seeing that seeing what these people look like i'd see all the dancers for j-lo they'd all look amazing so i'd constantly be like a submerged with my with all these things that I was comparing myself to. And the best thing I did was unfollow them all. Mm. Mm. I unfollowed, I've, I think I follow one fitness account on my Instagram now. And like- Gibson Studios. <laughs> <laughs> correct. <laughs> like I unfollowed it all and it made me feel way better because I was looking at all fitness models who like look like that for one day a year. Yeah. And they post photos of it and thinking I have to look like that mm. my whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just unfollowed them and it really, really helped me. Did you ever see that um, 10 minute body transformation video I did? Yeah. So I changed the way my physique looked well, for those who obviously haven't seen it. So I changed the way my body looked in 10 minutes uh, with two photos. So what I did is I put a light directly in front of me. So I had no shadow, uh, took a photo and then I did some push ups, pull ups and I put a light above me to create shadow. And it literally looked like I did a, yeah. you know, a, a ridiculous body transformation. Yeah. It was just two different lighting techniques and put some blood into my muscles. Yeah. And that was the difference. Yeah. Which is what you see in Instagram. Like Instagram's so full of yeah. shit. Like, and that was completely unedited as well. Mm. Mm. But as a girl, what's it like for you? I don't know if we feel like we have, obviously we have equal pressure, but then I feel there's, I think because we see it more, because there's probably more girls in the industry than guys. Mm-hmm. And of, like when you're in college, you're surrounded by, more girls than boys there's like so like you've got so many 
different people to look at. And I feel like when you say as a commercial dancer, like you're commercial, you're selling yourself. Mm. So mm. the way you look is a big a part huge, of it. It's a huge part of it. Like I always think what, how would my mind be if I did a normal nine to five job? Mm. I Well, obviously I don't know how I'd think about it, but I wouldn't think about it as much because, well, I wouldn't be like half naked just doing my job. Yeah. Like if I was working in an office, like I do, we do feel a lot of pressure and I feel, I know we are talking about it and approaching it more and saying and promoting more body positivity, but then I feel we're saying it, but we're not acting on it. Yeah. And then my other thing is like with the body, body positivity, like on the flip scale, say like, like Lizzo, she's like, it's okay to be overweight. Yeah, it's been no, gone too far. No, it's too far. It's not. A, it's not okay to be overweight. No, like not from a looks perspective, from a health perspective. Yeah, from like if what you, your internal okay body. I don't care if you look overweight. I care that you're unhealthy. Yeah. I care that your insides, like, or you might have a bad liver or bad, like, the health aspect mm. side of it. Like, let's not promote body. Let's not. We what we should be promoting is health. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I feel like we we promote it's okay to be fat or it's okay to be thin, but what we should be be promoting is it's not okay to be unhealthy yeah we want to be healthy yeah. how do we achieve this and like i always think if we approach everything with uh health the outcome the byproduct, will, of, the it byproduct yeah. of that will be how you look and how you feel absolutely you'll feel better about yourself you'll look better mm. you know what i mean mm. like if you're an overweight person who is lives a really healthy lifestyle you'll probably feel better you mm -hmm. will feel better. Yeah. Your, energy your energy levels and your sleep everything. and everything. Yeah. Like I was talking to a client uh, yesterday about the effects of like nutrition and anxiety. And there's a profound effect on like just basic things like sugar and how much anxiety you experience. And you think about how like you talk to 90% of the people, they have some sort of anxiety levels now. Mm. And I guarantee you they switch their diet up that a lot of that will change. Yeah. Which will then ultimately- Because sugar it. makes your, your body you do this. Like this. Yeah. Were you in the nutrition talk? No. Oh, you missed out. Oh, did that happen? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I just know because I'm smart and educated now. <laughs> but on the topic of education, mm -hmm. so I think one of the issues we also see is how much kind of subtle shame there is. You know how you were talking about um, uh, getting measured at mm. the beginning of your college auditions? So apparently they now measure kids once a year. They weigh kids once a year in primary school. Yeah. Why and, do I feel like I did that at school though? And to me, that's totally fucked. And I'm, maybe the intentions is right because they want doctors, records, whatever. But like, if you're slightly overweight as a kid, you're probably going to have an adverse effect and probably continue to make them more overweight because yeah. they've, it becomes a shame thing. But and my argument, well, I say my argument, my counter to this is instead of weighing them once a year, get a nutritionist and the parents to come in once a year. That's what yeah. I think. Because and the parents just, decide what they eat. Because yeah. the parents, yeah. So I, I, I'm not pointing fingers at the kids. I'm pointing fingers at A, don't, don't subtle shame. Mm. And B, spend that money on getting a nutritionist mm. once a year. Or once every six months, go parents, hey, this is how you look after your kids. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you look after you. Yeah. Because your kids are a byproduct of you. Like if, yeah. it, like it's off dance topic, but on kid topic, like if I was like making TV shows and stuff. Like I'd be showing like all the superhero characters like eating healthy food. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. like kids go, I wanna, I wanna be like I that. I wanna be like that. Like my uncle, like <laughs> when I was little, I used to wanna be a professional footballer and he'd be like, well, you know all the footballers that get energy, eat pasta. And I'd be like, I hate pasta. But I'll I'm gonna it. eat that. I'll try it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To get your energy levels up before you play. Like, looking at it now probably should have given me more than just starchy carbohydrate but like <laughs> but like do you know what i mean like find a a positive reinforcement or something mm. like and i just feel like i don't know how do we do that with dance how do we make dancers more educated but i guess the tough thing is they're adults so they should just be able to figure out themselves because they've got the internet but, but again they're, they're not educated from a That's young young level do you know what I mean? It has to come from the grassroots up, right? Mm. And that could just be colleges hiring a nutritionist, like what I said with primary school kids, yeah. getting a nutritionist every six months. I think I said to you whilst you were in college, mm. I was like, why, is, why have you not got a strength and conditioning coach? And why have you not got a nutritionist? You're professional mm. athletes. But then the hard thing is, uh, two people don't need the same thing. 
No, but like, you can give but a you can base give a, level you can education. Base level education and general consensus. But like, you know, the me and Nina, that's probably a bad example. Like me and me at college now compared to then don't need the same food and we don't need the same the same level of energy. The same level yeah. of energy. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that cane needs to eat less carbohydrates and eat some more protein and drink more water. This cane can eat whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> well, I know I get Love enough protein. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I probably still don't get enough water. But like, you know what I mean? Like, you got coffee. I got coffee. <laughs> is, there, is there water in wine? <laughs> there is water in wine. I had a bottle yesterday, so good job. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, we just but need to educate more. more. And I think if we teach health or people, you know, go and discover more health stuff, we'll have less body issues. Because mm. at the end of the day, like, it is important what you look like. Mm. And it is part like, of the job. It's part of the job, whether we like it or not. Yeah. But I think I think even outside of the dance world, your your body's so important as you how you come across. Like I hate to say it, but you you build an image of what that character is like the moment you look at someone. Yeah. Whether like same with cars. Yeah. Do you like know if, what I mean, if you're, yeah, like if I see, uh, like if I just if I met you for the first time and I'd be like, oh, Jake's in shape. That shows me he's he's got discipline. I've got discipline. Absolutely. It shows characteristics of who you are. You know, but then, here we go. So this is then the ad. So let's just talk about it. It's not dance, but general, yeah, yeah, general yeah. shit. Like, then we could go into the NHS and like look at all like maybe these overweight nurses and stuff like that, but they're saving people's lives from 15 hour, 17 hour shifts with no sleep. So mm. the fact that they don't go to the gym or, or like their discipline it's is different. Yeah, it? it's yeah, more yeah. forgiving. Like, so... It's a, it's tough, right? Because mm. then I can be like, look at this person, be like, they're not disciplined. Little do I know, they spent seventeen hours saving people's lives today. Absolutely. Yeah. Or they might have a fireboard issue, or you know, whatever. Like, there's so many variables to it, but we don't think that way. No. Do you know what I mean? And we're so, not programmed so to think that. We're way. not programmed to, to think. And so to say, <coughs> to say it like that makes no sense. Do you know what mm. I mean? Because we're not. We could maybe over the next hundred years start to think that way, but the likelihood is we're not. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What is perception? Yeah, it's all perception. It's like what we said before when I was like uh, about the Fifty Cent book. Like if someone pulls up to you in a f- in, in, a Fiat Punto. in a Fiat Punto, <laughs> yeah. Well, if I'm driving a Ferrari and you pull up in a Fiat and you lower your window to talk to me, I'm less likely to talk to you than you are if you pull up in another Ferrari yeah. or a Porsche. Mm. You know because what I mean? it kind like, of shows that you have the same status and yeah, equivalence. perception. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you might be the the one in the Ferrari might be pulling up to me to say nice car, and the one in the Fiat might be pulling up to tell me I've got a flat tire. This like, yeah. Yeah. this sounds like I'm advocating negative perception i'm not i'm no, just no. saying that's the game play it well i don't think there's an i don't think there's an answer it's just a conversation it's like mm. you know calling all the different variables out and their ways of doing it there's not a right and wrong i think everything everything in the entire world is it depends you know yeah. I mean? there's, there's never there's, <laughs> there's never, a big fat maybe there's never an, like a, a yes or a no it's always an it depends mm. like with stuff but i just can't imagine what it's like being how old are you 22 being a 22 year old dancer in this generation like with social media and with social media with uh, like wanting to chase this dream and having all these like things put in your face like one minute it's okay to be fat and then the next minute is like you have to look this way to achieve this like mm. I, I can't imagine what that what that takes mentally on you because mm. i know what it, it took you? on me how does it take it mentally on you let's ask that question it it has it does have a big effect on me like i do like even though i won't show it like i'll look in the mirror and be like oh like what's going on and also like i felt in lockdown i had i liked the way i looked but that's when you had your routine that we spoke about in the other episode this is the thing because i not because i had the time that's not a good excuse because i do have the time. Made the time i made the time in lockdown to focus on myself and do all of that and i think also it is a weird thing i feel a lot of people they look back on the way they look and be like oh why don't i look like that anymore and then then they'll move on to say me next year i'll look at myself now and be like oh i wish i looked like that it's a, i think there's such mm. a weird comparison that you're never gonna mm. feel comfortable in the way you look currently. Can we ask personal? Yeah. Do you on. feel comfortable in the way you look now? I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying you should. <laughs> I'm asking your opinion. Not entirely. Okay. Did you feel comfortable 
in your lockdown body. But I did, yeah. In lockdown, I felt, yeah. But I guarantee you, you probably don't look hardly any different. You just probably, you knew that you were putting in work then and mm. it made you feel better. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Did worse, as in it was like a mental. Yeah, yeah. You like, I, mental I, perception. You, you felt just, great as opposed to look great. Mm. Like you did look great and you mm. still do look great. But like, that's probably the difference. I listened to a podcast the other day and it was saying about, um, why was it not no, asked? <laughs> you listen to another podcast. <laughs> um, How dare you? Different ways to get different ways to feel dopamine. Like, mm-hmm. and it was saying that you. Um, oh, who was it talking about? I use wine and exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Balance life. But I think part of it was because it was locked down and everyone was in the same. We were all in the same situation. I say it's the only time in the entire history of the world where we've all been equal. Mm. So me equal, equal. like getting up at 6 a.m. in the morning, doing a workout, having like my routine, I felt probably a step above other people who were probably just sitting around watching Netflix in lockdown. Cause they're like, yeah, great. I've got time to do whatever I want. So like that excitement of going, oh no, but I'm in a, I'm in a better place than other people. It kept me going and yeah, striving you, you to keep the doing that aspect of it. Yeah. yeah whereas now you like that you go girl <laughs> that's, that's, that's what i used to do but like, like that I was said, that was a form of that's that the competition is my motivation like i don't know if it stems from childhood from playing football and like you know wanting to win mm. but like that's mine that's my motivation mm. i know if there's an audition or like i always was like i need to be better than everyone around me it was never about i need to be the best me <laughs> no, no. So that's something I really. But I was always like, I need to make sure that I'm gonna be booked. Like I've, I'm already short, pale, and ginger. Like I need no more other things against me. <laughs> like I need to make sure I look better than everyone. Mm. But your industry is very much just that. It's yeah, competitive yeah, I was 100% as hell. Percent based on what mm. you look. But like for, for example, me, like I don't care about competitors at all. I never think about them. I don't lose any sleep over mm. competitors. I don't now. Because the game's changed for you, right? Yeah. Mm. Now I just want to always be the best me. Mm. Put my best foot forward as opposed to just a better foot than yours. You know, whereas that's what I used to do. Mm. But it's because I'm no longer competing. No. I am. To some extent. I mean, yeah. you could be a better teacher, blah, blah, blah. But as in, there could be competing. <laughs> I was in, you're could competing I? against other teachers. <laughs> is what I was trying to say. Could I? No, no, I agree. Yeah, it could be John Graham. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I was yeah, trying yeah. to say is you're competing against other teachers for oh, students. For, for students. Mm. For 100%. Income. Yeah. I'm not saying, yeah. Shut up, Jake. No, no, I, I understand what you're saying. Do you think... Can I hear the question? Go on, you go. No, you go. I was going to say, what's holding you back from taking on the work you put in to make your body during lockdown to now? There is definitely in my brain... And I have no excuse for it going. I love yeah, that you can acknowledge that you have no I, excuse. I know I have no excuses for it. Point one finger. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got six. <laughs> you have to slip that in always. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'm only doing it because you're here. I wouldn't if there was another You do it every episode. episode. Um, <laughs> but like now you have all the other factors to life that's going on. Like now I'm like back working. I'm back socializing as such. Like I'm doing other things there's other factors to my life than I'm stuck inside. I have like no other choice, but to work on myself and do what I can Mm. in, in the house to my fullest capability. You have what feel like better options. (laughs) (laughs) Essentially. Your priorities have changed. Yeah. Yeah. Which is okay. No, it's not. Get back to work. Get back to work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. it's, It's tough, man. Like, you know, they say like, we should never body shame and stuff like that. I agree, we shouldn't body shame, but we should definitely like point out when people are unhealthy. <laughs> mm. How do you approach that? I have no idea, dude. I just know that I... <laughs> okay, so let's say... Mm. Um, and again, this I think that conversation varies quite a lot. So let's say you said to your mum, mum, you're getting a little bit overweight now. That's an I, easy I, conversation. I've, I've, I've had this conversation. Yeah, that's an easy time. conversation. But if you said... If I said to Georgia, Georgia, you know you're looking a little bit overweight not saying she is for the record that's a really hard conversation yeah so do you think it's still fair and right to point that out i think it's like you just i think it depends on where they're at right so mm-hmm. like are they overweight or are they overweight, overweight right mm-hmm. you know what i mean what's overweight 
like that's the other thing like overweight for a dancer or a performer and overweight for a, a muggle are yeah. two very different things mm. so like and again they're not because there's no rule on it but what's deemed yeah. is what a dancer should look like do you know what i'm saying yeah like how many times have you heard like a ballet teacher be like oh like tuck that in suck that in pull that up mm. Cause then, like. I can't. Like, <laughs> Where does it go? Because of, of what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. It's not because of no, it's not because of your ability to execute a movement. No. No fucking way. Unless it's like pull up your legs, so you have a stronger straight leg. But like when they say pull up, like what they should be saying is engage your core. Because mm. mm. if you engage your core, it's going to change the shape, but your muscles are going to work. But instead, we go pull up, which we think oh, my belly's hanging out. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. There's also though, like people always say, yeah, but if I am getting a little bit overweight, can you tell me? That's such a hard like way to. Has it, have people said that to you? Have they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know what's Or that. like, I'd rather like people tell me the truth mm. about my weight, so then like I could do something about it. But it's like that's like people can't do that really. I think that- I would do it. I would do it to like someone that i feel like i'd do it to you you do it to me yeah and you do it to me yeah yeah in and it's funny because i have these conversations so obviously in my line of work i have these conversations pretty much every week mm. and it's finding ways to word it in a way mm. so i would and i often ask the question i go oh yeah so how do you feel about your you know new, your nutrition at the moment yeah. i would say something that entices them to answer my question or my statement for me yeah mm-hmm. do you know what i mean because i can tell if a client's put weight on just by looking at him in the not in a negative way but let's say they're trying to lose weight and they put weight on, I will then ask them a question for them to answer it back. Yeah. But I can also say something positive. For example, I said to a client, you look more structured now. Mm. It's not like, you know, you've lost fat. Yeah. It, it says you look like you've got more of a structure to your physique. Mm. So it's again, it's choosing that, that word play. So it's not shaming. Mm. They don't go, oh, Jake's a fucking dick. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then with dance, it's hard because like your perception of what... Uh, a working maybe commercial dancer which should look like and your perception of what a ballerina should look like are two different things mm. but your ballet teacher might have a certain way that they want that they expect you to look so they're like i wish like they try and not without saying i wish you look like this but they're like oh we want to have nice long lines like how many times have you heard that we want nice mm. long muscles my ballet <laughs> teacher always used to say it my first one i'm gone like we want we want <laughs> nice long lines you know what mm. i mean like we want uh everything to look extended like which technically as a ballerina is is what you mm. want but as a commercial dancer you can want that as well but like if you go and look at like a lot of working girl dancers who maybe dance for like j-lo or like an artist who they prefer a curvaceous dancer for mm. a woman but that wouldn't necessarily be the the priority of what we want the ballet dancer to look mm. like mm. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, say you want a girl in like your denim shorts doing a twerk number, like they're not going to look like your traditional ballerina no. from the Royal Ballet. Are you suggesting to play within your body type then? Mm, well, no, because not if your body type is something and you don't want to do that. But I'm just saying, like, maybe we shouldn't deem all a dancer looks this way. Right. You know what I mean? Because what kind of dancer are you? What kind of dancer? Mm-hmm. So categories within categories. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a tough one, man. It's, it's a tough, tough conversation to have. I always feel for like dancers now because it's like they're being told one thing in a paper. They've been told another thing by the reality of what yeah. they see. So like the paper will be like, oh, like Lizzo's like pro body. It's okay to look this way. And then on the next page of the paper, it's like <laughs> Kate Middleston has put on four stones. <laughs> I just made up a celebrity's name then. I don't know if she has. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch. <laughs> You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, imagine yeah. like that's the difference so let's create solutions then okay Go on. what is uh this i haven't got a solution no no me either but, but i think it's very it. good yeah. pointing problems out but it, problems are enough there's still yeah. problems without solutions yeah something that springs to my mind is as you as an individual should learn to be comfortable with asking people about where you're at mm-hmm. physically and mentally mm. like open up that conversation like i could very easily have a conversation with you going hey, do I look a bit skinny than I do normally? You know, like, where's my body at? Mm. What do you think? Mm. Um, yeah. And asking people that obviously you trust and care yeah. for the opinion of. I think, and also just m- measuring yourself about how you feel, not about how you look, mm-hmm. mm. you know? Yeah. Because again, like, I, I'm, a f- I'm a firm believer if you prioritize health, the byproduct will be you feel better, you Absolutely. look better. Choose before. Like, I think that's the actual solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the solution is health. Go and make yeah. better nutrition choices. 
exercise, sleep. Mm -hmm. Like those things, they're irreplaceable. No supplement, no program, no nothing can replace those. No, they are like the three pillars of, for me, mm. of like what's going to make you feel better as in how you look, how you perform. How you perform, your like energy if you, levels. If you put performance-based stuff first, like health and performance, put them as like your thing and your byproducts will be how you look. Mm -hmm. mm. 100% agree. I think also don't not have like some form of, destination like don't just mm. like keep going mm. willy-nilly for the sake of it thinking oh yeah well i just want to be skinny and then you keep going down that road again and again and again and again and then like you don't really know where mm. you're going or yeah. where why you decided to do this in the first place you're just searching for an answer that you're not really Sorry, think, finding you don't know what answer you're searching yeah. for. yeah 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 you're shooting in the dark yeah it's tough man um I, oh, I had one then my phone distracted me uh what was i gonna say invest in educators so yeah. people mm. like go actually speak to nutritionists go speak to a coach go speak to high level professional dancers like no, your, no not high level professional dancers about health mm. do you not think people who no. have no dude like the people i used to look up to used to tell me to make sure i drink a bottle of wine before my photo shoot so i look dehydrated and i look leaner okay like don't look don't talk to hyper <laughs> but go but, but it, it does work you do like, <laughs> <laughs> it does work like you do look leaner because you're dehydrated yeah. but you could just do that with salt but your, your face exactly you like, could do it with just yeah salt and rice crackers yeah like um but yeah i think invest that money into someone who's actually going to educate you like some of my most interesting uh or most realized moments are the times where i've spoke to people who are considered be more educated than i am Mm. oh yeah for sure or experienced um the best thing i did to become more health conscious was listen to a podcast called mind pump and that's the whole reason i started this podcast mm. there we go mm. what go on elaborate mind pump uh mind pump podcast is a health and fitness podcast they talk about business they talk about mm. they kind of like it started off as health and fitness and it's just like now they've created this huge business they talk about business ventures they talk about everything they're fantastic three hosts one producer like they're so inspiring. They all have different backgrounds within health and fitness. So it's mm. like not everyone like there's no they're echo not three bodybuilders. There's not echo, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no echo chambers. Um, it's really, really good. They open my my eyes to what health really was and what to have a good relationship with food because obviously I had a horrendous one. Mm. And listening to that taught me how to have a better one and taught me give me the courage to stop tracking my macronutrients and my calories because I tracked for four years straight. Mm. didn't miss one day for four years tracked every single thing i put in my mouth now that is ridiculous that christmas is day i'd be measuring food can i hit a question uh -huh. what is your thoughts on fitbits i think they're great they're a great measurement i think as long as you don't go i need to reach more than i did yesterday because that's what tends to happen depending on the person i think people will be like i hit this many steps now i need to beat it now i need to beat it but it's a mm. good measurement to be like do you know what? Like last week I was like, I hit my target of like a minimum of 10,000 steps a day. This week I'm really slacking. Mm. It's a good measurement, but you just got to like anything balance. Don't become yeah. obsessed by it. Like I think <laughs> Fitbits are kind of like the fitness Instagram by the fact that like, you didn't go to a gig unless you recorded it and put it on social media. And I think Fitbits have become semi that as well. Like I, I didn't do mm -hmm. exercise unless I recorded on my Fitbit. However, I do think Fitbits are good for exactly what you said. It's a prompt going, I've been a little bit less, I've done less movement today. Just to create awareness of what it's, you're doing. Yeah. I would I would only ever use it as a loose awareness of what you're doing. Yeah. But the fact that you feel the need or a lot of people that wear Fitbits and uh, watches such as, we probably actually shouldn't say companies' names. But, <laughs> um, people become obsessed and they it's not real until they've recorded yeah, yeah. so i think there's a negative aspect yeah. to it because well. like i like it like say for say you work in tesco's and your normal job is stacking shelves and you wear your fitbit and you like you know you get a good track of the normal exercise that you do on a day and then one week they're like we actually need you on the counters this week and in your head you're like i i exercise loads at work mm. so i'm i'm only gonna like go to the gym twice this week twice mm. a week on a normal week because i get so much exercise in tesco's walking up and down stacking all the shelves carrying heavy stuff mm. like you don't need to go to the gym to lift weight if you've got a job where you lift heavy shit like <laughs> how many plumbers and builders go to, or like people who carry heavy shit go to the gym probably not many because they carry shit all day like and then one week you're on the tills and then you wonder why maybe you feel like depressed 
and mm-hmm. you wonder why you feel shit. Now you have a measurement because you go, wow, normally I release all this energy or all these endorphins and this week I'm not, but you're still going to the same place. Yeah. But you might not be aware that it, that what you're doing on a day-to-day basis has changed massively. Like, mm. and I think Fitbits are great for dancers. Hear me out. Go on. Especially for like, uh, if you're in a position of like, you're at college or, or you rehearse. Because my if I wear a Fitbit, uh, f- and we've kind of spoke about this before, but without it being about a Fitbit, but like say you dance six hours a day at college, yeah, and you're used to getting in X amount of steps or burning X amount of calories, and you mm. eat, only eat 3,000 calories, and then you have the summer off where you're not and at you're college, still 3, calories. and you're probably eating more because you go home and mummy and daddy cook you food, yeah. and, and you've got more time, and they buy you nice food, and you've got time. So mm. now you're probably eating 4,000 calories, but you're only doing the equivalent of half hours exercise. Mm-hmm. Now you have a measurement to go, this is why I've gained weight. This is why I feel like shit. Or for some people, this is why I look better. Because some people mm. might be being overworked. Mm-hmm. You know, some people take the break, eat more food and voila, you look better. Yep. Because not everything is equal. Yeah, yeah. That's why the answer is always, it depends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet I, I, again, kind of rolling back to the Fitbit um, or watch a similar eyes. Like, are you, you know, how it tracks your sleep. Mm. I then looked at that and go, oh shit, I've had like way less sleep before. And so then I've already allowed myself to be tired. Do you know what I mean? I've gone, mm. oh, I've had six hours rather than eight hours. Or I've had five hours rather than seven, whatever. Yeah, so you've given yourself an excuse for, you've given for, yourself for excuse. slacking. But if I never looked, I probably wouldn't know. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or I've had one and a half hours of deep R and whatever sleep it is. <laughs> mm. Do you know but what I mean? then you can yeah. use it as a positive though. It just, it depends on the person. Because like, we're not the people none of the three of us are the people that would use that as an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. So some people would go, oh, I'm really shit today because I haven't had any sleep because my watch told me so. But we would never do that. We would just go, I'm really shit today. I'm really shit to, today. I need to work harder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I need to pull the fuck up. It just depends on the person. Like we can't blame that on the device. Like, no, of course cause, not. Because that person would have found a different excuse. Yeah. If it wasn't for that. Yeah. They wouldn't blame, if they couldn't blame their Fitbit, they'd blame something else. Mm. My yeah. dog at my sleep. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, there'd be another reason to why to do mm-hmm. it. Interesting fact for you. So, we burn sixty percent of our calories um, from just existing. So, if you laid in bed all day, sixty mm-hmm. percent of your calories just to keep your body warm, keep your blood ticking, etc. Mm-hmm. Your blood ticking, your, your body ticking. Thirty <laughs> yeah. percent is through neat. So, just your day to day movement. Day to day movement. That's my favorite kind of exercise. I recommend that to everyone. Absolutely. And then only ten percent is through exercise. Yeah. If you have a gym session that day. That's so nice. your how your how you spend your days is actually really really important compared mm. to like the 10 10 percent of exercise that's why i used to always park my car the furthest away from and my, walk in and stuff like that the take the shop, stairs all that the stairs. Like yeah. when i lived in london i never stood on an escalator always walked the tube absolutely like those little choices so i was in um you know the big 24-hour tesco's in yate in um and you know there's oh. slow <laughs> you know that's slow, slow ass escalator. And, that, and it's like that motherfucker is slow. and people stand and they go it. like that and they're on there for five minutes and then they get and the off. incline is like this. Yeah, it's, it's like basically you flat. It's basically I'm like you literally could have gone up the stairs in fifteen to eighteen seconds. Yeah, <laughs> but you stood there for five minutes. Yeah, God, don't understand it. Yeah, the neat neat is my favorite. I always say like like if you wanna like I used to do neat, <laughs> even though it technically it wasn't neat, but it was like when I was in LA, I used to get up and just go for a walk and Facetime my mum. Yeah, so, so, well, so that is neat, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, but I, I made a conscious effort of it being. Right, right. A so it's like I mean, exercise. it wasn't. Mm. It was still exercise because yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I planned it in. It was like I'm purposely going for a walk for this reason, as opposed yeah. to when we think of neat. I think we think of it as if you know what it is, as like it just happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. just part of your life. Part of your day to day living. Yeah. but like I can never remember. But like walking my dog, for. like that's my neat now. Mm. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean. Yeah, hundred percent because it's part of your day to day activity and a non exercise active. Is that what it is? Uh, anyway, Karen talking. <laughs> no, I'm intrigued what you're going to say. I can never remember what it stands for. Non exercise. Oh, it doesn't come up. Active trauma. <laughs> it's not trauma. <laughs> non exercise activity thermogenesis. Therm- so it didn't even sound like a T. <laughs> 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 gotcha. Yeah. So, guys, I guess to sum it up, I sound like you. I guess to sum it up, that's proper Jake. <laughs> that's a proper Jake. Sum it up. Life coach Kane. Uh, go and educate yourself and put health yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like no matter what you look like, because you might think you look incredible, but you're not healthy. Like that was me. I looked yeah, the you best look at, in every room. You look at supermodels or what like 1990s and 1980s supermodels were. So unhealthy. Yeah, they live on water and cocaine. Yeah, literally. Yeah, stop comparing. Sounds like a good time, well. but. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Put health first. Educate mm. yourselves. Um, and if you don't know how to or where to look, I promise you Mind Pump, the podcast. They also have really good fitness programs. Um, they're just dope for me. They changed. They did a massive change for me. Last one. Nice. Sweet. Done? Uh, yeah, guys, the Ins and Outs Easter Intensive you haven't done kicks of the day either. The 11th. Oh, these are kicks of the day. I've got some new dunks, but I'm not going to lie. I got them thinking they were white and black with the shiny bit, but they're, they're not in mint. And they came and Georgia was like, mm, they look a little bit girly for you. And I was like, I don't care. I'm wearing them. <laughs> so I wear them anyway, because I'm like that. I'm not too cool to wear mint. Anyway. So yeah, the Easter intensive, two days of training, 100 pounds, the best bargain you're going to get. Six teachers, including myself. We have Alex Chambers, we have Rowan Chambers, we have Camilla, can't say it, Zelecki, Zelecki, can't say her last name, just say Cam Cam, Camilla, and John Graham, and the final guest teacher is... Find out next week. <laughs> Find out next week. No, I still don't know. I'm trying to book them in. Everyone's busy. So, we're trying to make it work, trying to get another lovely lady to come and teach. Um... Just waiting to hear back from a few peeps, but I promise you it will be fantastic. Message me on Instagram if you would like to book on. If you can only do one day, it's okay. It's, you can come and do one day. It's 65 pounds for one day or 100 pounds for two days. Do two days is better value for money. And we will also have some new merchandise being sold there. So you can come and buy some new shizzle. I um, it. I'm not. <laughs> and yeah, so that's what's coming up for me. Please subscribe to the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, like us on Instagram as well. Or follow us on Instagram. And please share the podcast with your friends. Tell your other friends who are performers or dancers that they need to listen. Um, and let us know what you want to know. Like if you've got any specific questions, mm -hmm. any topics you'd like us to try and cover. If we can't personally cover them ourselves, we will get people in to cover them. Okay. I'd like today I got Nina in because I didn't want to talk about just a male perspective of body dysmorphia because it's different for a girl. Mm. So we got the wonderful Nina Benina Brown in the room as well. So thank you for coming in. No, thank you for having me. All the love. Always a pleasure. Jacob. Yes. If you need anything filmed, go on Instagram, <laughs> find at Gibson underscore media Gibson and he's your camera what? ninja. <laughs> what? No, nope. Gibson underscore media underscore. <laughs> you say Gibson, Gibson twice. Again. <laughs> Tired guys. All the Gibsons. Also My now edit showreels. Oh yeah. Ooh. Your showreel did actually come out quite nice. I was happy with that one. Yeah, I was. I was. I was pleased. Have you got it on your phone? It's okay after. I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'll be the judge of this. Um. Anyway, yeah. Peace. Oh, you actually made it in it. Did I? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You're in the showreel. Go me. <laughs> be careful, they don't watch me and not you. Uh, anyway, peace out. One love. Bye, Felicia. It's the ins and outs show with Kane and Jake. We got Nina here and it wasn't a mistake. We had a real good time talking about being skinny or fat. And that, my friend, yeah. Mm. Ah, ah. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs>